Good evening and welcome to the new 21st Century Interactive Have I Got News For You, which, with the flick of a single button, viewers can now switch off. <laughs> In the news this week, there are raised eyebrows at Tory Central Office as Stephen Norris unveils his hand-picked campaign team. The Labour Party is suspected of more dirty tricks as a mobile phone user is deluged with calls asking for kinky Swedish massage. <laughs> and in Hendon, news leaks out that this week's edition of Just 17 includes a free poster of Britney Spears. <laughs> On Ian Hislop's team, a comedian who says that in order to be successful in show business, you have to keep banging away while well, it worked for Catherine Zeta-Jones. <laughs> Dominic Holland. <laughs> and with Paul Merton tonight is a Liberal politician who once survived a head-on collision with a lorry. That's what you get for sticking in the middle of the road. David Steele. <laughs> that, so, joke, that joke is so old it's going to get a telegram from the Queen any minute. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <I'm just> <laughs> So that's the best we can do on the guest front, I'm afraid. Uh, <laughs> let's see if we fare any better uh, with the and questions. And the joke front, by the yeah. <laughs> Ian and Dominic. Here we go. Oh, that's um, the butcher of Grozny, or Mr Putin, sir, as Tony calls him. <laughs> um, what do you do? You're a sort of murderer. Yes, lovely. <laughs> it's amazing, though, because he's, he's ex-KGB. And in the footage, he's been shown around number 10 by Tony Blair, but if he's an ex-spy, he probably knows about number 10 already, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he's probably going around going, Tony, you've changed your curtains. <laughs> he did bring uh, a couple of cars with him. Have you seen... Yeah, there's a car called around? a Zilly. I think it's called a Zill, actually. Oh, is it called a Zill? <laughs> <laughs> we can have a look at it here. All right. <laughs> in but fact, he has two uh, Zills. Like Prescott. He's known as Two Zills Putin. <laughs> Do you have one in your new role in Scotland? No. Sort of nothing, Skoda. Okay. Nothing as big as that. <laughs> hmm. But you, you had a number of different cars, haven't you, over the yes, years? Yes. Many, many. Some of them quite old. Is it right you entered the Monte Carlo Rally? Yes. Times? How Two many times. times? About four times, I think. Hmm. Where'd you come? Anywhere near Monte Carlo? <laughs> <laughs> Not there every time, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Was it was it a first past the post system in this <laughs> race? <laughs> well, we saw the Queen there as well. Uh, who else has she been uh, entertaining over the years? Why was it so controversial? I don't know why it's controversial. The Queen seems to um, entertain anyone unpleasant um, in the whole world who comes over. <laughs> She had Ceausescu. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, she just had Zhang Zemin. The Chinese guy, the Duke of Edinburgh, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and she, uh, she sent a message to Robert Mugabe this morning. Congratulations on 20 years of independence. <laughs> that was good timing. Mm. It's interesting, because our farmers have um, shut up now, haven't they? They're not complaining at all, are they now? <laughs> Yes, this is the state visit by uh, Vladimir Putin uh, during his visit to London, according to the Mail. Mr Putin spent an especially long time at the Imperial War Museum. Shopping, presumably. <laughs> uh, Paul and David, eyes down. That's Wall Street, I think. Um, they thought it, there was going to be a huge sort of crash Monday, and it wasn't. So what have the papers named Monday? Uh, well, it's not Black Monday, because it wasn't really that bad. It's Grey Monday. Mm. Beige Monday. <laughs> <laughs> and what triggered all this? Um, well, there were some people in America who uh, decided that they were... They, they were uh, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and quite honestly, I couldn't care less. <laughs> Bill Gates lost a lot, didn't he? Didn't 17 he billion he lost. Mm. Another loser was Yahoo, the internet server, which lost 54% of its value. It's now called Oh Shit. But there's someone who's happy about this. Me? <laughs> I was thinking about Gordon Brown. Well, he, he thought the economy was overheating. Mm. And it isn't now. It's sort of underheating. 
which is much better. Yes, right. Yes, Gordon Brown, of course, prefers the security of uh, hard cash, generally, as we can see. This is so-called Grey Monday. Lastminute.com lost more millions in the crash. According to The Guardian, shares dived to a new low of 140 at one point, but then suddenly rallied, presumably as traders dialed in looking for quick flights out of the country. <laughs> Ian and Dominic. Oh, it's William Haig. Uh, doing a stand-up. It's an asylum. He's going to be put in one. <laughs> There's some refugees. Oh, they look evil, don't they? Oh, yes, indeed. And they're going to be... A police van. Put in a police van. And that's where they're going to put them. That looks like a travel lodge. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is Asylum Seekers, isn't it? Mm, it is. So what are Haig's plans that he suggested? He's going to have detention centres. Yes. And they're going to be there for years. What's he going to call them? School. <laughs> Barracks. Barracks. <laughs> it's one of his sillier ideas, because um, he thinks you can put, put them in camps and process it in six weeks, but it'll cost even more money, and they'll still have a right of appeal anyway. So I think it's just, just a way of getting into the paper. And so where did he nick the idea from anyway? Um, the Labour Party, because they've set one up, which doesn't work either. <laughs> it's actually the German system that, it, that he's copying. Really? Um, Does yeah. that work? No, not in any way. <laughs> Is this the German system between 1936 <laughs> and 1935? <laughs> this is William Haig's plans for asylum seekers. Uh, Haig argues that Britain is a soft touch compared to other European countries. For example, asylum seekers arriving at the Belgian border are turned back almost immediately by the words, Welcome to Belgium. <laughs> And uh, finally, Paul and Lord Steele. Oh, this is um, obviously Kane. the mayoral election, isn't it? Yes, mm, it's Kane, yeah, as you say. Kane, yeah. Uh, he's supporting Harry Enfield, is that he? He's supporting yeah. Harry Enfield. There's yeah. um, your Susan, uh, candidate, I think. Susan Kramer. Susan Kramer. Well, um, she's, she's been supported she's by. supporting Barry Norman. Supporting Barry <laughs> yeah, Norman. Yeah. And uh, there's Dennis Skinner, um, who's just had a go at uh, Ken Livingstone. Tony Blair called um, Ken Livingstone a, a chat show politician pretty rich, given that Blair will only appear on Richard and Judy. <laughs> I think he's done Des, hasn't he? Has he? The yes. tough one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll be sooty soon. Uh, yes, Dennis Skinner did uh, come out uh, in favour of Frank Dobson. How else has Dobson boosted his uh, popularity? So that's a boost, is it? <laughs> <laughs> They're boosting their popularity with a poster ad uh, by Trevor Beattie. Uh, he of the wonder bra. Uh, Hello, same. boys. <laughs> Frank yeah. Dobson would look terrible in a bra. <laughs> I can't see it, not with that beard. Do you know what his slogan is? Yeah, look at these. <laughs> Frank and to the point. <laughs> so who was Ken partying with that we saw? That was Fat Boy Slim. Wow. Anybody would know that. <laughs> Who's got their finger on the pulse. How do you know so much about Fat Boy Slim? Um, he used to be called Slim Boy Fat. <laughs> and then he put on some weight. And he's, he's one of the world's top rave DJs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're just on the edge of Ian's ignorance. <laughs> Your sentence should confirm it. <laughs> what do else know? does he do? He's responsible for the Ibiza sound. <laughs> um, he's actually working as a look-alike for someone at the moment, as the Mirror pointed out this week. <laughs> oh. So you're called Ian's smug boy, he's not. <laughs> 
Uh, yes, it is the uh, various celebrities uh, declaring their support for the London mayoral uh, candidates. Since uh, standing as an independent, Ken Livingstone claims he's been given as much negative coverage in the media as a convicted Nazi war criminal, who incidentally is also way ahead of Frank Dobson in the polls. <laughs> So at the end of that round, both teams, like the Sundance Kid, have achieved a quick draw, scoring as they have four points each. <laughs> this week we welcome the world of tabloid journalese as we would welcome a rabid dog. To rank examples of the sub-editor's craft to identify, Paul and Lord David. Mm -hmm. Tailors in Hamster Jam. Mm -hmm. Yes, we know this one, don't we? We know that one, yeah. Oh dear. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, somebody was planning to make an I think made a, a, a jacket. A hundred hamsters have, have, made, have gone into this jacket, and uh, it's been, you know animal rights protesters said this is terrible. And uh, Geeves and Hawks, I believe, are the names of the uh, tailors, uh, Savile Row tailors. And Jeeves, made, I think you'll find. Je it is. is it Jeeves? Could be. Mm. Yeah. Sounds more likely, doesn't it? Is it? Yeah. How's it spelled? G E I. -E oh, yes. That's the thing that threw me. You see, I was following the letters. Yeah. <laughs> So, Jeeves and Hawks, yes, that's right. And what yeah, have they been responsible for? So, let me for? see, Jeeves, how do you spell Jeeves? G I E V E S. Yeah. Was there a special day at school? <laughs> well, they wrote all these names on a black, because I must have been off sick. <laughs> Um, so it's the tailors um, have um, there's, there's made a, they've, they've made a gacket out of. Um, <laughs> Yes. <clears throat> Would you like to see what it looks like? Yes, please. Mm. Right, so would we, but unfortunately we're not allowed to show you. Why? Oh. Uh, because we phoned up Geeves and Hawks. I'll oh, mispronounce their name now, because they wouldn't allow us to show it. Uh, but so it was in the papers. You could have taken a photograph out of the paper. No, we would be sued. Well, by the hamsters. Sent to prison. <laughs> in fact, we might be able to have a look at what we think it might look like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> not the same one. That's, that's a very big hamster head, isn't it? <laughs> That's the most useful thing that anyone's ever suggested to me you do with a hamster. I got no sympathy with hamsters. They just sit in cages. <laughs> they sit, they We've sit had loads of them. They sit there and they just die on you and upset them. <laughs> yeah, but that's not the it's hamster. This way they get made into a coat. <laughs> that's not for it. That's not the hamster's fault, the fact that they sit in a cage. People put them in there. It's like saying, Rudolf Hess, all he does is sit around in prison all day. <laughs> You know about the politician who was shouted at because his wife was wearing a fur coat and somebody said, do you know what creature had to suffer and die so that your wife could wear that? And he said, yes, my mother-in-law. <laughs> but, but this this anti-fur thing could spread. I mean, what's going to happen to Piers' robes? Yes. Who's Piers' robes? Piers' robes. <laughs> <laughs> and they're made of... Would you explain to him, Paul? Piers robes, you know, it's the ermine when you get... Yeah, you're, you're there. Yeah. You know what it's made of? Gerbils. Yeah. What? Gerbils. Gerbils. Ger Gerbils. <laughs> no, no, he was Hitler's propaganda oh, minister. Yeah. <laughs> it all comes round in the end, yes. doesn't it? Well, it's made of ermine, but you can choose uh, either white rabbit or to have fake well, fur, all the, all, the, all the new ones are fake. If you look at Geoffrey yeah. Archer's one, it's all... <laughs> Aren't you chairman of, of the pro-hunting lobby, so aren't you sort of... Uh... No, 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 that's an, a previous life. Right. <laughs> Sorry, weren't you chairman of... <laughs> <laughs> yep. So you're quite in favour of, uh, you know, killing defenceless animals. I mean... <laughs> well, perhaps you'd like I to didn't... chase the hamsters over fences before... <laughs> you... I've never chased... Perhaps you get a horse on a wheel and a hamster on a wheel and they could chase each other like that. <laughs> I've never chased anything over a fence, unfortunately, but I did defend it, yes. Mm. Mm. You have to hunt hamsters if the kids let them out. <laughs> yeah. yeah you don't, actually. What you do is you get the cat. <laughs> <laughs> and the cat nice. will find the hamster for you. Lovely. That's cruel. Kill it. You know you'll get uh, bricks through your window now, because... Well, That's from it. you. <laughs> no way from... hamsters can pick no, up th that, This is a way of rescuing the hamster. <laughs> no way. No way. Little tiny things. If they, if they collaborate... <laughs> yeah. One breeze block between ten of them. Yeah. Walking around North London, where's his lot live? Yeah. Uh, yes, there are uh, several advantages of using hamsters and uh, tailoring. Not only is the fur machine washable, but they turn the spin dry around themselves. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Ian and Dominic, your spinning header. Girls on the pool. Drinking, isn't it? They're drinking, drinking beer. Drinking lots of beer mm. to get drunk. As opposed to what other reason? <laughs> to get, get fat. <laughs> right. It was a pleasure. I'm actually all up for this because when I was growing up, the only chance I ever get any action was when they were drunk, which is quite nice. <laughs> That's quite sad. Yeah, I didn't get a laugh either. <laughs> <laughs> people would just know, people were thinking, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> It's about girls becoming lads. Yes. Isn't it? Yes, that's mm. what they're blaming the on, the yeah. laddish culture. That's right. Mm. They follow football, they drink pints of beer. Yeah. God. Get into fights in pubs, leave it, all that. <laughs> leave it, Wendy, she's not worth it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, yeah. It is the news that uh, single young women in Britain are drinking more alcohol than ever before. Uh, according to a recent report, women nowadays would rather end up getting drunk and having a good time than start a family. Although, unfortunately, one often leads to the other. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, drinking habits of modern women were summed up by 22-year-old Kate Singleton. I do drink more than I should, but sometimes I will not drink much at all. Some of my friends drink a lot more than me. Some of them drink less. <laughs> Surely, with sparkling conversation like that, who needs a drink? <laughs> Which uh, minor hiccups brings us reeling to the end of this session, uh, with neither side seeming capable of a lead of any sort, locked as they are on six. Mm. Odd one out seems a fair way to describe our next round, given that's what it is. Just one per team this week. Paul and David, your cool gang comprises. Margaret Beckett, Jean Calmont, Gin and Kin, and the Metropolitan Police. Mm. I'm slightly hampered here by the fact that I don't know who two of these, well, three of these people are. Uh, I know who the Metropolitan right. Police are, I know who yeah. Margaret Beckett is. Um, top right hand corner, uh, Lou Reed's mother, I don't know who she is. <laughs> um, <laughs> has it got something to do with uh, something I don't know about? Um, it's not something that you'd associate with any of them, certainly. Have they all stuffed a giraffe inside a telephone box? <laughs> Do they all eat worms? I don't associate either of those two activities with any of those people. Um, oddly enough, no. No. Okay, um... She's, she's the oldest woman in France, isn't she? The oldest person alive. Yes. And they're the oldest was. Asian people Have they made alive. records? Why do you say that, then? Well, there was a sort of thing through my brain that was connected to my vocal cords and it came out. Um. <laughs> It basically tarts as an electrical impulse. Yeah. It then moves through the brain. So I think they've all made records. She's made a record. Uh, the top right woman. The oldest twins have made a record. Yeah, um, Jin and Kim. As Jin pronounced, spelt <laughs> Jin. <laughs> Jin, Jin. Um, yes. Metropolitan Police uh, actually have made a record. Margaret Beckett's the odd one out. She hasn't made a record. Is the right answer. Oh, no. Oh. Yes, I was going to say, it's something that uh, David could have appeared in. You have, in fact, recorded a... What was it called? I Feel Liberal All Right. Really? Mm. God. You must be very thankful that we haven't played that. Very. Right. But very rather irritated that we're about to. Very difficult. <laughs> You can help me to change the face of British politics. <laughs> Let's pull our country together instead of tearing it apart. <laughs> That's what the Liberal Alliance is all about. Join us. It was help. recorded in 1977 mm. in the middle of the night in New York. Mm. That's no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> the Metropolitan Police, you're not aware of their uh, records that they had out? Uh, both this year, in fact. No. Two what? rap records they've released. What were they called? Uh, yeah. Taking Care of Business was the first one, which was <laughs> to encourage recruitment, and the other was to encourage club goers to inform on gangsters, <laughs> featuring uh, local rapper MC Maurice. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a very hard street name, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Maurice. What happens if you get on the wrong side of me? Perms your hair. <laughs> So why have you picked Margaret Beckett as the odd one out then? Well, her musical talents, uh, fortunately, are never due for release. There is a house in New York. To 
to mark her 121st birthday, despite being partly deaf and blind, a techno rap single was released by Madame Jeanne Calmont, or Snoop Guidy Dog, as she was known. <laughs> Ian and Dominic, this for you. Johnny Lee Miller, Jorg Haider, Rodri Morgan, and a Womble. I do know that, I read this week anyway, that Rodri Morgan, the Welsh first minister, if you like, mm -hmm. he was involved, or maybe not this time, but he's, he's done the London Marathon. I think whether this time or not, but someone's probably run as a Womble, yeah. As a Womble, yeah. This year, yeah. And Haider, the Austrian Nazi, is the odd man out because he's the only one who's goose stepped the marathon. <laughs> has, has Johnny so, Lee Miller run the marathon this year? I don't year? know, but he's a very fit guy and he's an actor and he's probably, you know, he's fit. That's pathetic. <laughs> well, I think that's uh, right. I know these two probably have. I, I, I assume Johnny Lee Miller has and Haider is the odd man out because he is the only goose stepper. It took him this about eight hours. Isn't it? This, is why, this is why Ian loses every week. His guest says the right answer and he says that's pathetic. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. Good. He ran the New York Marathon. Ah, uh, right. In fact, right. yes. Uh, in... With the bear. Yeah. On the bear. <laughs> he was a liberal, you know. Who? George Hyder. He's a Nazi. Oh, I know, but he was a bit off message. <laughs> <laughs> when he... So we, we, we threw him out of Liberal International. It's absolutely true. Really? Yeah. Oh, good yeah. for you. And yeah, when no, he well said done. that Hitler's uh, employment policies weren't too bad, we thought, oh, we can't really, you know... Mm. You're not... liberal, but you're not yeah. that liberal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Mm. I bet that finished his political career. <laughs> the long-distance race was first named after the Athenian messenger Pheidippides, who ran all the way to Sparta to enlist help for the Battle of Marathon, although no-one took him seriously because he was dressed as a rhinoceros. <laughs> which tireless efforts bring an end to this long-running round with uh, Paul and David uh, on their last legs, trailing as they are 10-8. No. And so to the missing words round, the climax of the show, the missing word there being anti. Our usual, <laughs> our usual trawl through the week's headlines, including none more or fewer from this week's guest publication, the indispensable American taxidermist... <laughs> Uh, this month with a special pull-out section. Um, <laughs> so, prepare for... Testosterone can improve what? Verbal skills. Scrabble score. <laughs> Same Is it sex life? Um, so your, in a manner of speaking... Sore throats. It's sex appeal. It's your uh, I'll give you one, yes. Thank uh, you very much. It's kind of you. <laughs> Men's chat up lines. Ah, yes, uh, verbal skills. Is, that's, what that's what I said, said right? That's right. Said. That's why I gave Are you a point. Next, a grand day for what? The National. Stuff in an owl. <laughs> <laughs> I know this one. A grand day for? If a Part private eye, this, this one was. It is sadly the right answer, yes, private eye. Yeah, it's um, in the Telegraph. Uh, then why is it a grand day? Because it's a great, it's a thousand issues, private eye. Is that all you've sold? <laughs> <laughs> Next, the easiest way to mount what? A horse is with blue tack. <laughs> it's from Taxidermy America, isn't it? American Taxidermist, yes it is actually. Olympus. Mount Olympus, <laughs> no. <laughs> Rabbits. Gerbils, gerbils. No, I, this Gowls. could take a while. Parrot. Um, Rats, parrots. Sheep. Batten. Dogs. A blue whale. <laughs> the easiest In... way to mount batten. <laughs> It's a misprint. <laughs> a snapping turtle is uh, on oh. the answer that we were never going to get. Uh, next, uh, Arctic Explorer tries what? Staying at home. <laughs> is it, um, stuffing a penguin? It's not when the wife's American. not looking. <laughs> yeah. not you can't fly away, you know. No. <laughs> It's to be a mind reader is the answer. Next, what for pandas? Viagra. There are two stories. There's another one about um, uh, porn movies they're going to show pandas. Yeah. yeah. Sex films uh, oh. for pandas, yes. Zoo bosses uh, are having to resort to panda pornography, apparently. Uh, one particular favourite is Debbie Does Whipsnade. <laughs> and uh, 
finally, SAS crossdresser in what? In train um, incident. Cubicle trashing incident. Um, no. He was thrown off a train. Yes, he was, and it does refer to that, so I'll give you the point. The wars again uh, is oh. what it refers to. And I happen to know that because I was on the train. Ian threw him off. And I met him. The 6.45 to Hastings. Yep. Um, he got off at Tunbridge. <laughs> he came up to me and said, hello. And he was an enormous six-foot bloke wearing a nice little bonnet, a dress, <laughs> and carrying um, a, a sort of fluffy rabbit. And he mm. said, say hello to my stuffed toy. And he's a big bloke. And I said, yeah, hi. <laughs> <laughs> this is Joanne Wise. Yes, and here he is. There he is. So Ian wins based on questions about his magazine and people he's met on the <laughs> train. <laughs> Uh, which uh, stuff and nonsense means at the end of tonight's frolics, this week's uh, Elephant Men are Paul and David with 10, whilst this week's Lion Kings are Ian and Dominic with 14. Mm. So a share in the spoils to our winners, a share in lastminute.com to our losers. <laughs> But before we give them leave to leave, we're left with the prospect of our caption competition. Ian and Dominic, this for you. Mandelson scandal breaks. <laughs> <laughs> if he thinks he's going to have fibre back, he's got another thing coming. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Gordon Brown? I've never seen yes, him yeah. smiling. <laughs> no, he's yeah. always smiling, Gordon Brown. Never no, a yeah. frown with Gordon Brown. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Paul and David. <laughs> Two short dogs, full photographer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about his dog, he bites worse than his bark. Oh. <laughs> Biggest cat. Uh... <laughs> what are you groaning for? <laughs> you got him about... nothing, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> what about... Um... What do you expect, Alan ain't born? <laughs> <laughs> Lazy dog doesn't move while acorn grows around it. <laughs> And I leave you with news that after his disastrous handling of the Rover sell-off, Stephen Byers takes on a job more suited to his abilities. <laughs> In Washington, a protester picks the wrong moment to shout, kill the cops. <laughs> and Mohammed al Fayed's latest passport application arrives at the Home Office. <laughs> Good night.